Hello everybody, my name is Tamilola Mike Pamiloye and I'm here to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can receive notifications and updates on new movies that will be dropping from time to time. So if you've subscribed, thank you so much for subscribing and if you're not, please subscribe. You did not respond. You have turned me into a radio that speaks without his listeners responding. You did not ask me any question this morning, Mama. Argue with me, don't you? I don't seem to remember any question anymore. When are you going to give my son a child? When the Lord gives me one, Mama. No! I cannot accept that answer! My people will not accept that answer! They are asking me questions! What questions? They are asking me if you still have a womb. They are asking you might have spoiled yourself before you came the way of my son. They are asking why? After four years of marriage, you are yet to produce a child. God will give me a child. A perfect one. At his own appointed time. When is the appointed time? Is it after four years of marriage? What do you want me to do, Mama? and give my son a child. Or do something about yourself. I cannot kill myself. I am going back to Africa next week. I will tell my people that my son married a ego. Ah! Mama, you called me a ego. Go and 
give my son a child. I have told you not to rely on any man. The doctor is a man. I am not relying on any man. And besides, the doctor is just not any man. He is a specialist, sent by God to help me. Anyway, it's too late now for this kind of conversation. I will see you when I get back from work. I stay my regards to Dr. Martin. Psalm 127, do you know what it says? Except the Lord builds the house, the labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keeps the city, the watchman watches but in vain. He says further, It is vain to rise up early, to sit up late, and eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Isn't it? Then, when you know all this, why don't you allow him to give you rest? Yes, sweetheart. When I hit menopause, then he will give his beloved sleep. My dear, that was... Excuse me.
dropped off home. It's a baby. Is everything okay? I'm just going for a routine checkup. Checkup for what? I'm going for a fertility test. Fertility test? For what? For everything. And why don't I go and confirm what the problem is so I can find a solution to it? Is this how I'm going to sit and hold my hands and watch my life pass by me? Caroline, I have been married for four years. Four years, Caroline. No pregnancy, no miscarriage, no signs of a baby coming soon. Friend, I have told you, God's time is the best. And why wouldn't you say that when you have three children in just five years of marriage? Is this the kind of story I'll continue to hear until my son will say it? God forbid. Hello? Hello? Did she just hang up? I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. Hello? Mrs. Johnson, the doctor will be here soon, okay? Take care. Mrs. Johnson, how are you? So far, coming to you, they had an emergency and needed my attention. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Look, dog. Step on this room and let me check you real quick. Take a deep breath on me. Deep breath. Doctor? Yes. This result was sent from the pathology lab. Oh, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Mrs. Johnson, this is your result from the lab, you know, from the last time you came. Everything here looks perfect to me. It shows you are in good health and you are in a perfect condition to carry a baby. Mrs. Johnson. You need to keep your hope on God. You need to eat right, like I've always told you, and keep a positive frame of mind, and wait for your good news. Is it when it's going to be too late that the good news will come? Mrs. Johnson, there you go again. I was just thinking, don't you think it would be good if your husband took the same test you, know, you went through, just for us to remove all doubt? and focus on the solution. I think so too. Mm -hmm. I'll let him know. Okay, okay. Take care of yourself. Okay. And my regards to him too. That is it. That is it. This is the third time I'm getting this confirmation. My husband has never agreed to go for a fertility test. Not for once. Never. Never.
먹어봅니다. 
not leaving any moment from now. Okay, and that is why I called. I want to know the girl that you are flying on and the expected time of arrival so that the children can pick you up. And um, actually, I'm living on American Airlines. Flight 1604. I'll get married at 4 p.m. Okay, okay. See you then. Fred is here. He wants to say hello to you. Okay. Okay. Auntie. Fine. Lizzie, Lizzie, you are supposed to be doing this. Hello, friends. Come on, where's my suit? What's wrong with you guys? My suit is so thick. Hello, friends. Since I'm next to Dallas, people never care to come and check me a business. And I let me recover from my bed. I'm so choked home in the office. Besides, how's the preparation for your birthday going? Ah, oh, we thank God. Things are taking shape. I trust those children. They always come up with a lot of surprises all the time. Anyway, thank you for allowing you there to come and celebrate with me. Congrats. Congrats. Bye, Fred. Thank you very much. Bye. More things we had. What is it? The doctor. I told him you'll be coming to see him. Don't worry. I will go and see him.
Hello everybody, my name is William. I'm the first son of the popular and Beatrice, my mom. Just want to say welcome and thank you for coming. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to propose to our beloved Auntie Beatrice. Go get your drinks. I propose a toast of love, mercy, favor, goodness, long life, and happiness to our beloved Auntie Beatrice. Yeah, yeah. Get your attention. Can we come together for the cutting of Auntie Beatrice cake? I wish to invite Auntie Beatrice and her lovely family. Spell Jesus, you will now cut the cake. Ready? Yeah. J E S U S. Sorry, but why are you sitting by yourself? May I? Oh, sure. Your face sure looks, looks familiar. Really? UT Dallas, class of 1999? Class of 99? Mm hmm, yeah. Aren't you Linda? Linda Johnson? Mm hmm. And you? Jacob. Jacob? The name sure rings a bell. Jacob the Prof. Jacob the Prof. Yes. The fake one. Hey. Jacob the fake hey. one. Oh, I know. Hey. 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 Wow. You look Good. so different. Yeah, well. Sure. Well, 
It ought to be offensive, but you used to be very, very skinny. You know what I mean? Well, I admit I was on you the tiny I mean. side before. Mm -hmm. Things have changed. I can see that. Wow. You said Linda Johnson. Tell me you're married. I recall you were Linda Raymond. I'm curious. Yes, I'm married to Fred Johnson. You know him. Fred Johnson. Fred Johnson. Fred Johnson? Mm-hmm. Or should I say Mr. Jesus? Whatever. Wow. You folks must have established your own church by now. Not yet, though, but we belong to a local church. Is that so? Wow. So how did you come to know my big sis? Who invited you? And Beatrice and my family attended the same church in Dallas. Proud to her relocating to Maryland. You know, after the death of her husband. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. It is a small world. Hmm. You can say that again. Hmm. But I can't believe this is you. You are looking so different. Hey. Your wife has done the good job on you. Linda. What? I'm still searching. I know how hard it is when you're still searching, especially when you're going older. But don't worry, the Lord will do it. Amen. By the way, does Fred still go around harassing people with his Bible bashing? Jacob. Hey, I have to call it like it is. And Jacob the prof, hey. the fake one. Still Linda. 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 Wow, big sis. I've been watching you and Jacob. Do you know each other? Oh, sure, and Beatrice. Yeah. My husband, Jacob, and I attended the same college in Dallas. Wow. It's a small world. This is a small world. Jacob is my little spoiled brother. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> Maybe now that he has seen you, he'll be able to put the pieces of his life together. Big sis. I don't appreciate the impression you're living on Linda. Mm, me. I'm not a bad guy. <laughs> it's me. just a bad world. And it's where only the strong and the, the brave survive. Mm -hmm. it's oh my goodness. That's my dear. <laughs> he has a lot of excuses and stories to tell. Hmm. Anyway, Linda, see me before you leave tomorrow. I shall will on the house. I'll sit for your husband. Okay. Okay. Hmm? Okay. Come on. Good thanks for
cannot believe who I saw at the party. Who? Oh? Jacob. Which Jacob? Jacob the prof. The fake one? The fake one, of course. Is that so? Who is it to Antibitris? <laughs> that is the wonder of it all. He is Antibitris' younger brother. Really? You know he used to be very, very, very skinny. <laughs> I can still recall his picture in my mind now. I take that picture <laughs> off your mind. <laughs> he is looking so different. Of course. His wife must have worked on him, just as you have done to me. <laughs> <laughs> he is still searching. He's not married. You must be joking. He is still searching. Still searching? After this years? <laughs> Auntie Beatrice. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. <laughs> Incredible. about you with my husband and thanks for the gift that was very thoughtful of you oh no never mind it's nothing please let me speak to them my name is Fred okay my name is Jacob Jacob uh -huh. the fake one <laughs> the fake one thank you the fake professor Fred how are you long time I couldn't believe it when Linda told me she saw you and that you are a brother to Auntie Beatrice. Now, I thought you remember her and sister named Beatrice. I always talked about her back when we were in school. Yes, I know. But there are many ladies named Beatrice. Besides, who would have thought you are the brother to a God fearing and innocent sister like Auntie Beatrice? Jacob, you are the complete opposite of your sister. There you go again. You have picked up the sermon from where your wife left off. <laughs> Friend, the truth is, I am a Christian. And I do go to church every Sunday. The truth is this, even going to church every day is not the answer to your salvation. But what? But accepting Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and surrendering your life to Him alone Fred, you have started again. The same old sermon that didn't work then. It's never going to work now. If you open the door of your heart to him, it will work. Fred, I have not called to listen to your philosophy. But I merely just called to find out that your wife made a bad you. Look, I'm going to have to call you back sometime next week. Okay. Greet your wife and the children for me. <laughs> Jacob, I was told you are still single. <laughs> are you pulling my legs or what? But look, I don't have time for you. I'm going to have to talk to you some other time. Bye. Jacob, bye. <laughs> <laughs> 
Bye. Mr. is still searching. Jacob. <laughs>
himself. I'm very sorry. But when are we going to end this frequent conflict? Why are we angling our faith on what a man can do? Frank. Yes. Can I ask you a question? Yes, please do. Nina, go ahead with your question. Do you really love me? Yes, of course. You know I do love you. Can you do anything for me, for the sake of love? Anything? Even if it is against my spiritual conviction and personal faith, Nina, answer me. Wait, answer my question first. No. No. So there are some things you can do for me, even though you claim you love me. I love you. God knows I love you. I've loved you since our university days. And my love for you has never diminished you at all. But I can't go against what I'm so much convinced of. I mean, what has going for fertility test got to do with my sincere love for you? Tell me. I have loved you too since our university days. I knew you to be very fervent for the Lord. Students called you pastor then because you always go about with your Bible. I love you for loving the Lord, but... But what? Who knows? What might have gone wrong after then? Anything could have gone wrong within a month or a week or even... There you go again. Are you accusing me of something? I am not accusing you of anything. But please, clear my mind. Take all these doubts away and go for the test. And I said no. No, I don't want to spoil my fate. Just call now. He said he's coming to Dallas on a three week project and he would like to stay with us.
Linda, you didn't respond to what I've just said. When exactly is he coming? Second Monday of next month. And you'll be traveling second week of next month and you will not be back until Friday the following week. Yes. Did it occur to you that Jacob would have spent four days in this house with me alone while you will not be around? Yeah, you are correct. Can't you ask him to come some other time when you'll be around? Dear, I don't think four days is anything to worry about. At least, you still have two weeks and three days more to spend when I come. And you think this is the wise thing to do? Actually, it is the salvation that is most important to my heart. Don't you see this is an avenue for you and I? To convert Jacob to Christ when he comes. Honey, you are beginning to amaze me. Does anyone have the power to convert a man to Christ? This is the function of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will work when he has a man to use. Let's allow him to use us for Jacob. He is Antibutri's brother. You are being unnecessarily sentimental. And Beatrice I know. But this Jacob, I do not know him very well. Yeah. It will be an unwise decision. If we have to tell Jacob not to come again, just because of my absence for four days, don't you see this as a God arranged plan in making sure we minister Jesus into his life? If you say so, I still want you to think about it. You and I trust and understand each other. But how do you want people outside to view us or even him? To view him as how? I mean, I am a married woman, alone in the house, with my unbelieving single old school mate. How do you want people to be us? It doesn't seem right to me. I don't feel good about it. Oli, let's allow God to use us for him. That is my concern. I believe it is impossible for him to stay under my roof. For three weeks, we can't accept Jesus. Shouldn't we be wise as we seek to win men for Christ? God is not the author of confusion. He will not allow him to come if you will not be around. I still don't feel good about it. I'm convinced that's the right thing for us to do. Listen, Fred, you are convinced not to go for a fertility test against my own conviction. And now you are convinced to bring in an unbelieving friend along with me in the house. Why can't we ever agree on crucial matters? Listen to me, Fred. We are leaving a crack in the walls of this home. No, you are the one making a crack in the wall. Me? How? You don't always agree with me on every crucial issue. No, you are the one leaving a crack in the wall. You never respect my candid opinion. You don't follow the scriptures. You are not submissive. No, you are not breaking the scriptures. You never deal with me with understanding. You are too heavy. You are too heavy. Me? Too heavy. Heavy? Linda? Heavy? Linda! You are too heavy! Me? Too heavy!
than the unnecessary long stopover in mm. St. Paul, Minnesota. It was okay. How's Fred? Oh, he traveled on a business trip and he will not be back until Friday. But he is deeply sorry. We would have loved to be here to welcome him. Mm. You mean I'll be here for four days without Fred? Yes. My, my, have my. A seat. Kids. Let me say hello to them. They are not yet around, but they are coming. Mm. Well, at least they'll keep this place lively until Fred gets back. They're not back from school or they're visiting friends? By the way, how old are they now? How many boys and how many girls? You did not get my point. What point? When I said they are not yet here, they are still coming. I meant Fred and I, we do not have any child yet. Oh my God. Linda, I'm very sorry. No one ever said this to me. I'm very sorry. Well, Fred and I, we've been on this for the past four years. Well, what do you want to eat? Oh. Thanks. Um, I think I prefer rice with plantain and uh, assorted meats and uh, two bottles of beer please. Two bottles of what? Beer. I prefer Anakin. <laughs> Forget about the beer. We do not give alcohol in this house. Neither do we serve it to our guests. Linda, if I don't drink at least one bottle of beer a day, I'll die. <laughs> really? You are blessed. Welcome to rehab. How? This is the best place to die and be revived. Anyway, Jacob, when you go upstairs, the next room on your right is the guest room. Go in there, put down your things, take a shower. By the time you are done, your food will be ready. <laughs> Woo. Well, when I was coming here, the cab drove by a small shopping mall. Oh, I hear there's one down the road. I can stroll to it anytime. And I hope you're not going there to drink. Did you study psychology and mind reading? No. But this is my house, and I will not tolerate that. In this house! Come on, Linda! Not in this house. At the shopping mall. At the shopping mall, Linda! I just don't see the big deal in going for a fertility test. Just for a checkup and that's all. Well, perhaps you can convince him to go when he gets back. His refusal is putting a strange thought in my mind. Strange thoughts? What strange thoughts? When he is being invasive about going to see the doctor, one would have thought there's something wrong somewhere. There's this friend of mine in Alaska. He never told his wife that as a result of a childhood disease, he's been medically certified unfit to father a child. He continued hiding this truth from his wife and rejects seeing prophets and priests. What happened to his wife? Did he confess to her yet? I don't think so. But he told me, he confided in me, and pleaded with me never to tell his wife. Meanwhile, 
The poor woman continues to go for several medical checkups. But that is not fair on her. Some men are like that. Heartless and inconsiderate. But me, I'll never do that to a woman. And I hope Fred... Never mind. Don't worry. What were you trying to say about Fred? No. I mean, Fred would not do that to a woman. Don't you agree with me? That what? That... They could never do that to a woman. But I'm wondering why he's been dragging his feet. I'm going for this medical checkup. Never mind, I'll talk to him when he gets back. Please. Perhaps that's why I'm here. Sorry to disturb you, Jacob. Oh no. Would, would you like to come in? Oh no. I don't. I actually don't want to disturb you any further. I'm going to ask you some questions. Um, can we please go out there to the couch? About your Alaskan friend. What about him? Is he real or imaginary? And why did you ask? His case is similar to what we're going through. 
Are you saying probably that Fred had a child? Oh, no. No. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying you can't father a child. <laughs> but... Your heart is heavy. What's going on? What's bothering you? I wish I know why he's refusing to go for his checkup. At least we can know what the problem is. And have you tried to ask him why? He's avoiding going to see the doctor. He said it's against his spiritual conviction. Spiritual conviction. What kind of spiritual conviction prevents a man from checking after his state of health? <clears throat> He's been saying that for a while. <clears throat> that was the same thing my Alaskan friend told his wife. <clears throat> Please talk to me. Ask me anything. I ask you again. Your Alaskan friend. Is he real? Or someone I know? I wouldn't want to answer that question just yet. I'll wait till Fred comes back and I'll talk to him. I promise. Linda, this problem will be solved. I assure you. I assure you. Thank you.
yesterday. You tried your line several times. It's not going through. What happened? We were in the meeting throughout yesterday. Sorry, I switched off the phone. Then, after the meeting, what happened? You seem to forget you left someone at home. I am sorry, sweetheart. I will try and call you this evening. By the way, how is Jacob? He's fine. He's at home. He's waiting to see you. He has so many things to discuss with you. I will see him when I get back. Okay. Sweetheart, I just finished reading this article about this specialist doctor in Michigan. He has several clients, so many degrees. All right. All right, all right. We can't talk about that now. I will call you in the evening. Bye. Old. What kind of a man is this? Can you imagine him shouting at me on the phone? He shouted on you? This afternoon, while I was in the office, I raised the issue. He wasn't even patient enough to listen. He said he would call me back. No, he never did. And when I called him, he was shouting on what did he say? He said... He said I'm too preoccupied with the medical issue. What? Why is Fred doing this? Isn't it natural that any woman affected would think this way? That's okay, Linda. That's okay. Come on. Stop this incessant cry.
怕。But he has not destroyed it unless you allow him to do that. Brother Johnson, I encourage you, stand by your wife and cheer her spirit up at this time. Pastor, my point is this. Why should my wife, Linda, allow Jacob to enter into my bedroom? To the point of forcing my own wife on her matrimonial bed. Why? What type of foolish carelessness was that? Brother Fred, if you keep focusing on the past, you will not make progress this way. She has explained everything to you that she was so dejected and depressed. When the man in question took her into the bedroom and... And that is the point. That is the point. He took her into the bedroom as if she could not walk. <laughs> On her two feet by herself. Enough. Enough, Brother Johnson. Since you have refused to understand all the explanation I've given to you, what do you intend to do now? Tell me. Do you want to divorce her? <laughs> Actually, the whole thing still looks like a dream to me. I'm confused. <laughs> Brother friend, you have no other godly option than to forgive your wife and pick up your life again. Jesus can heal your deep emotional wound and bring stronger love into your midst if and only if you allow him to do so. The final choice is yours. If you want joy to be restored back into your home, you have to forgive this woman and accept the major blame. I never knew it was a mistake on my part by bringing an old unbelieving friend under my room in order to be saved. Since when has opening your door to a stranger for care and hospitality become a, a sin? It is not a sin to bring a stranger under your roof to receive the salvation of God. But it is a fatal mistake to underrate any unbeliever who do not have the Spirit of God. And it is your major fault as well to leave your wife alone with a man whom you knew very well, to be very wayward. In that case, I never knew I was having a woman who has a very weak spiritually as my wife. I didn't know my wife could not resist such temptations from a man she knows very well. I never knew my darling wife could fall so cheap in the absence of her husband. I am disappointed in you. Oh. 
wife was raped on this bed. <clears throat> what is happening to me? Why has the joy and peace in this house suddenly turned to sorrow. A sudden mist has enveloped this home. It is the mist of sorrow that you have allowed into this house. I have loved you from the onset of our marriage. But you have never loved me. You hate me. You have been looking for a way to show it. And you showed it. You poisoned me. You set a trap for me to walk into. You killed me. I trusted and relied on your judgment. But you betrayed me. I may have been raped. But yes, you set me up for it. But you brought in the man that raped me. You set me up for it. You arranged it. You played a game with my life. You played a game with my emotions. I hate you, Fred. I hate you. staring at. You are looking at a raped, wretched woman. You have come to catch a glimpse of a young woman who is so gullible enough to be raped on her matrimonial bed. Linda, why are you saying that? No! Leave, Leave me alone. No, let me. No! I never want to talk to you. Leave me alone! Linda. Linda, open this door. Linda. Linda. Open this door, Linda, let's talk. Linda. Linda. Open this door. She hasn't. And she has refused to communicate with me. Really? Please take me to her. Linda! Linda! Please 
open the door and let's talk. It's okay to open the door now. It's me, Pastor Tony. Can I have some words with you, please? All right. All right. We just want to know that you are okay in there. Just say something to me. Anything. Please. What's all this? <laughs> For God's sake, Pastor. Linda, open this door. Open the door. Linda, do you have a spare key? I can't really figure out where the, where the spares are. We could break the lock if it is necessary. I guess we really have to. Because we do not know what has happened to her in there. Give me something. A plier or hammer? Anything. I have some in the garage. Okay. Linda, you scared us. Why did you lock yourself up like that? And you refused to answer any of our calls? I'm sorry, Pastor. I don't want to answer this man. I don't want to see him. But he's still your husband, you know? No, Pastor. He doesn't love me anymore. Since he brought a man to rape me in this house. Fred, Pastor, let me have some words with you, please. I warned you about this, didn't I? I told you to handle this matter with wisdom and understanding. I'm sorry for all this, Pastor. You have left a serious crack on the wall of your home, Fred. You knew you were going to be away for so long. And you are aware that your wife has no one living with her. Known fully well her condition. Yet you allowed a man that does not have the spirit of Christ to lodge in your house. In your absence. Your wife was completely against this idea from the beginning. But you stubbornly insisted. Perhaps she had the premonition that such a thing might happen. But you completely ignored her advice. So she was correct when she said that you set this trap for her. And you set her up for days. You just exposed her easily. To the attack of the devil. Your only solution is to stand up for her and help her to overcome this sense of guilt and nightmares. You have to help her to regain her lost confidence. Let her know that you still love her. You have wronged her, Fred. 
you must go and apologize. Yes, you have to go and apologize to her. Thank you, Pastor. Terribly sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. I know I have hurt you badly. I have left you unprotected. And I have wounded your pride. When your spirit was reacting against my bringing Jacob into this house, I didn't listen. I was too proud to listen to your cushy advice. Please. Forgive me, Linda. Please, Linda. Forgive me. As far as I'm concerned, nothing has happened. But I let down my guard and I was taken cheaply. No. No, Linda. You wouldn't have been taken so cheap if I had not created a room for that. You have always been a very strong woman since I knew you. I'm sorry, Fred. No. No, I should say that. I am sincerely sorry for making it to happen. It's all my fault. Can we now have a word of prayer together? Yes, Pastor. We really need it. Thank you, Jesus. Eternal Righteous Father, we worship and adore you. What is wrong with your sick? 
What type of life is this? Why would I do this to a friend's wife in the first place? I hate myself. This terrible, immoral spirit will kill me so. I can't help myself. When will I stop this? Linda. Come and take your seat. Come and sit down here. Linda. You haven't told me why suddenly you turn quiet at this time. About what? About the question. Tell me what is on your mind. Linda, I'm talking to you. What is the problem? Fred, please leave me alone. Not until you tell me what the problem is at this time. Since you never wanted to hear me say it, I choose to bear the pain alone. What is it? Mama called this afternoon. You mean my mom? What did she say? She's talking me about the same old matter. Disturbing me. But I'm not bothered. Because I know it's only God that gives a child. But please. Take this confusion away from my heart. I know. I know. About the medical checkup. Okay. How we go for it tomorrow? Tomorrow? We shall go to dinner tomorrow morning. For real? There's nothing wrong with me. And I have no cause to be worried. Or is there any problem with the test result? Actually, we, we've conducted all necessary facility tests in the past three days. About three tests in all. And I'm having with me the result of the three tests. What does the result say? Um, nothing negative. Only that you should have saved yourself much worries if you had come long before now. What exactly are you saying? The, the result here shows that there is nothing wrong with your reproductive system. There is 
not just stopping you from fathering a child. You just have to wait for God's time. That's what we'll be doing. We shall keep waiting. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Mrs. Johnson, doctor wants you. Cheer up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, apart from the blood test, the urine test is also very important for a complete diagnosis. It's not a serious problem, doctor, is it? <laughs> the result I'm having here come up with something else. What is it? I'm having here with me good news. What? What is it? Your wife. She is two months pregnant. Ah! What? My wife? Pregnant? Probably in about four or five months. Should be able to run a full scan to determine the sex of the baby. Linda, <laughs> you are you are pregnant. Thanks for your support. You are pregnant. Don't go. My God. My God. Yes. My God. You have done it. You have done it. You have done it. Thank you, Doctor. Um, 
Make sure she doesn't go into any hard, um, hard work. But yes, yes. Mm. You die. Congratulations, Brother Johnson. Is Linda there? Yes, sir. We just want you to know so that you can hold us up in your prayer, sir. Yes, Brother Johnson. I'm very happy for you. Brother Johnson, the Lord will perfect what he has started in Jesus' name. Let me speak with Linda. All right, sir. Hello, sir. The Lord has done it. Thank you, Pastor, for your prayers. Yes, he's a faithful God. The Lord answers the prayers of his people. In fact, Brother Fred told me that the doctor discovered that the pregnancy is two months old already. Yes, Pastor, we didn't even know until this afternoon. Thank you so much, Pastor, for your prayers. That's a great evidence that those who put their trust in the Lord shall not be put to shame. The Lord bless you. Amen. Thank you. My, my regards to mommy. Amen. Right. We celebrate this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I told you my God would do it. And he has remembered us. <laughs> Linda, what's the problem? Oh, no. said you are two months pregnant, isn't it? What month was it when I traveled and Jacob was here?
my friend, what type of message did you leave on my cell phone? And besides, when we called you, you were saying some strange things that we could not understand. Brother Fred, what has happened again? It is a shocking revelation. Revelation? About what? About the pregnancy. The test showed that Linda is two months pregnant. Yes, and your point is? Jacob was here two months ago. And she was raped two months ago. No, that cannot be, Brother Fred. That was just one night. And how many nights does it take for a pregnancy to stand? Brother Fred, yeah. stand go again. She even realized this fact even before I did. She knew the pregnancy could not have been mine. Go and hurt her. Where is she now? She's up there. We're hearing again. He said what Jacob did to me two months ago is <laughs> responsible for the pregnancy. <laughs> he said the pregnancy is not his. Linda, in your own view, could this be true? Please, excuse me. Certified medically fit to father a child. Nothing is wrong with me. We went to the hospital for the medical test together. She saw the result herself. She was a did civil. you and Linda? I mean, did you sleep with her at any time before you went on your business trip? Well, yes, of course, yes. I think it was three days before I traveled. You don't believe that could be responsible for that pregnancy? No. No, Pastor. And why, if I may ask? Well, if you know you can father a child, then don't you think that you could as well be the man responsible for the pregnancy but I know why you don't want to accept the pregnancy why the truth is you have not really forgiven your wife for allowing herself to be forced into bed by a stranger you claim you have forgiven her but your inner heart still it's her for that incident. May I remind you? You are leaving a crack in the wall of your home again by not wholeheartedly forgiving your wife. Not until you accept the role you played in the unfortunate situation, you will never see the reason to forgive her. Did I do anything wrong? Not a wrong thing you did. When you delayed so much in going for the medical test, despite all the pleading and persuasion of your wife, her spirit will have been calm and she will have gotten no reason to confide in a stranger on such a sensitive matter or try to beg him 
to even persuade you on it. Pastor, I'm sorry. Please. I admit I have a fault in the incident. But if the pregnancy is two months old and Jacob was here two months ago, then I can't accept that pregnancy as mine. What you've gotten me into. What? What is it? You trampled my honor on the ground. Is it about what we did? I'm sorry. Sorry? Do you realize it has cost me my home? How? Jacob, I am pregnant. You are pregnant for your husband, right? Uh, I don't know. He said, he said you may be responsible for it. He said you... Then you must be a fool! I will not agree to that. I will never agree to that. No. No. It will be foolish to call Jacob. No. Thank you. 
here and he'll see you when he comes, okay? Okay. Linda? Yeah, I'm sorry for keeping you waiting. That's okay, Doctor. Yeah, um, why are you here? I told you that in about four or five months you'll be able to get the sex of the baby by scan. I know, Doctor. But I actually came for something different this time around. What is it? Doctor, I wish I knew the exact time the pregnancy stage. <laughs> The exact time the pregnancy got there. Oh. Your husband must be able to keep record of that. What do you want to use that for? Well, I... Uh, by this record, the, you are... Yes. You are three months pregnant. And at the exact time, she'll be able to tell you the EDD. Linda, what is the problem? It looks strange. What did you just say now? Please, can I know how far am I? Three months, three. You are three months pregnant. Everything is in the pregnancy test result paper we gave to you. Did you bring the paper? No. No. My husband has it. You told us two months. Two? Uh, no, no, no. You see, the, the, from the record here, yeah, this is three. And I gave the same paper to this is three months pregnant. You are three months pregnant, not two. Ah, Jesus. Jesus. Any problem? No. No, doctor. Please, can you do me a favor? Yes, what is it? There have been some arguments between my husband and I about the exact number of pregnancy, the, the, the months. Uh, he thought you said two months. It's, it's, it's three, not two. Okay, doctor. Please, can you help me call him and inform him that it's not two months, it's three months. Well, I will, I will. I will surely tell him. I will call him, I will tell him. One more thing, doctor. Mm -hmm. Please, can I get another copy of the pregnancy result? Another copy? Yes, doctor. I will tell the nurse now. They will print out another copy for you. You can collect it as you go. Thank you, Doctor. I'm grateful. All right. Pastor. 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 Fred, you look so worried. Anything the matter? I got a shopping telephone call from Dr. Donka. And what did the doctor say? He said the test conducted on Linda showed three months pregnancy, not two. Well, thank God. There is no more possible. No, Pastor, there is. Pastor, there is. I came home from the office rejoicing only to find this note from Linda. For me. And what do you intend to do now? I don't even know where she is, so that we can talk. About what? About everything. About the pregnancy issue. What is there to talk about again? You already told her you're not responsible for it. No, mommy. Mommy, it is now evident that the pregnancy is mine. It is three months, not two. Pastor. That notwithstanding, it is evident that I lost actual confidence in you. You made us suffer so much emotional distress. That is why I want to make amends. All right, Fred, let's come over here and have this.
You have hurt the woman badly. I wonder what type of a husband you are. You rejected her as your wife. When you questioned that her two months pregnancy could not have belonged to you. And now you're looking for her? After you've been told you're wrong? What type of a husband are you that will refuse to stand by his wife during her darkest hours? <sighs> How do you intend to get her back now? I know I have hurt her badly. I have so much disappointed her. I have turned my back on her when she needed me most. I don't know where to look for her. I don't know how to get her. I don't even know what is wrong with me. Oh God. Oh God. Have you tried calling her on her mobile phone? I called her and the line went through twice. But she cut it off. She didn't want to hear my voice. You know, I tried again, even before coming to this place. But she had switched off her phone. I don't know what to do, Pastor. Fred, may I ask you a question? Yes, Pastor. If your baby plays with an human faces, in his hand. Would you disown him for doing that? No. No, I will not disown him. I will wash his hands and then carry him. That is what I call love. I put it to you, friend, that you don't love your wife deeply enough. It is evident that she loves you, but you don't demonstrate this love in return. May I share three scriptural verses with you? I just hope she will forgive me again. Listen to this. The word of God declares in Colossians chapter 3 verse 19. Husband, love your wife and don't become bitter against them. And if I may ask, Fred, do you still have any bitterness against your wife? The Bible also says, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 25, the word of God says, Husbands, love your wife as Christ loves the church and gave himself up for it. I ask you again, Fred, can you give up yourself for Linda? Finally, Ephesians 5.28 also says, So husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. Any man that loves his wife loves himself.
the crack in the wall of your home. Come back and sit down. Sorry. I have been calling, but you would not take my calls. I also made several attempts to reach Linda, all to no avail. I understand. But I have been restless since I left here with the shameful thing that I did. That was why when I received your invitation, I took the very next flight out of Detroit to come and ask for your forgiveness. Please, forgive me. Jacob, please have your seat. Thank you. <coughs> You know what? What? Tell me. Tell me anything. Jacob, if you had gotten Jesus in your life, you would never have done what you did. My life has been a miserable one, friend. Just look at me. At this age, I have not settled down and I don't have a family of my own. Rather, I go around with ladies of easy virtue. I am dirty inside and outside. Yes, I agree. If I had gotten Jesus in my life, 
as you and Linda have, I would not have done what I did. But, what is wrong with me? Am I crazy or something? How could I have done this to a fella as good as you? Jacob, it is not yet too late for you to accept that Jesus if only you want to. Fred, if you take me to this Jesus, I will be grateful and satisfied. I prefer you to take me to him rather than somebody else whom you have to set me free. Yes. Yes, friends. Jesus. I want you to repeat after me. Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus, the Son of God. I thank you today for bringing me to the cross. Oh, 
yes. Oh my baby. It does look like you're ready for oh, it. Please don't say that. No. I am ready. <laughs> no, tell me to do a job. Tell me to do a job. <laughs> tell me to do a job. <laughs> Precious, precious. The Lord bless you. Yeah.